Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'm Jared from 3Cs Recreation. We've got another beta we're working on for you guys today. This is a 2022 cross trainer. This customer wants the kickstart kit added. I have done two stroke kickstart kits on the video, but nothing cross trainer specific. Because if you do buy this kit, and if you want one, call me, we'll give you guys discounts on it and ship it to you. The directions are not exciting. So they're in four different languages. They skip all over the place. Nothing's in order. Uh, it doesn't even tell you all the steps. So. I'll just do a video on it. We'll show you guys what I've done. So I'll show you what I've done so far. And I've done nothing like bike specific to the kit. All we've done is remove the pipe. We have two springs in the front. We got our bolt here, our bolt in the back. That lets the expansion chamber come off. And then to get to the muffler, I like to pull this plastic off here. So I've had one bolt here and one down here. Let's this come out of the way. And then we can hold this up and we can get to both of his rear muff, uh, muffler bolts. I don't want to break this by prying up on it, so let's just get it out of the way. We've removed the skid plate, so we've got the bolt in the front, the bolt on the bottom, that's been down, and then we have our 13 mil here. That's how we drain the oil into the bucket here. Make sure you torque that when you put that back in. He wants engine ice back in his bike. We've already drained the coolant, so super simple to do. You have your coolant cap on this bike up here, and the one with the crush washer right here, this is the one that we unscrew, it's an eight millimeter, pull it out, hold your coolant container up, catches all the coolant and take your cap off. So that is everything I've done so far. And down here, this is our new kickstart lever, new washer, new uh, tabbed washer, uh, gasket I should say the big one is. And this is the gears internally to make your kickstart kit work. Really simple, we'll go through it and get it all installed for you guys. So. What we're gonna do first is we need to re remove our coolant pipe here, our upper cover, and then we gotta move our inner clutch cover and that'll let us get to the back of this. One more thing I could have done before the video is remove my rear brake pedal. So we'll do that first here, get this out of the way so I can pull this cover straight off here. What we'll do next is get this upper cover off and there's always a special safety bolt on these to like tamper proof bolt. So you want to run to like the local hardware and grab one of these that has the hole in the middle of it or knock the center of that pin out. So what we're going to do is we'll put this in here to remove the one special bolt and then we got the two regular eight millimeter bolts on, on the other side there. With the three bolts out, we can go ahead and pull this cover right off the side here. And you wanna be careful not to ruin the gasket behind there. It can't come off yet until we get the power valve arm loosened. And to do this, there's a spring on here, a little safety wire. So we pull out on the side of it. And I always put keep my hand under it so it doesn't drop down. So I've rotated it around and now it'll drop straight off the bottom here and we need to keep this. So what I always do is I make like a little bucket out of my, out of my components here. So we'll put it right inside there and that'll pop straight off the side. So that's out of the way. And then now we can work this gasket up and out, but you don't want to rip it. So if it doesn't want to come out, you can always wait until you get the inner cover off. But so gaskets off. Now we can move on to the inner clutch cover bolts. We do not need to take every bolt out. This, this bolt is just holding the outer cover to the inner cover. And some of these water pump bolts are just holding the water pump to the inner cover as well. So we don't have to take all of them out, just the ones around the edges. I also recommend before you get every bolt out to put an oil pan under here, because even though you've drained the oil, as soon as we crack this loose, there's always some oil that's gonna drip down. It'll get on the frame, but you don't, I don't like it on the work counter. So drain pans underneath it here. I'll crack the last couple bolts and then we'll pull this off the side of the engine. So this is what it looks like on the inside. Make sure you keep track of your centering tabs for the gasket. So there's one here and there's one on the bottom there. And they just fit into their grooves in the case there. 
So what we have to do next is remove our six bolts that are holding the clutch pressure plate on. So we'll get these all spun off and we can pull our clutch pack out. What's interesting, and before I removed the last bolt here, I've loosened it, but I haven't pulled it all the way out. There's different steps to this inner ring that put pressure on the spring plate. And you'll see that this is actually in the third position. And I've done a video on this clutch setup on a standard RR model. And the bolt was actually in the middle. So it had the middle pressure plate being used. Where in the cross trainers, they're going right to the third one, which is, I didn't know that. So I will remove this last one. So for you guys at home, when you're putting this back together on the cross trainers, and you can kind of see where the, where the uh, bolts have rubbed against the plate, so you can't really do it wrong. But that's going to be where they where it goes back in is the third one there. When I pull these clutch plates out, I always keep them in order exactly how they came out of the bike. So I'll take it out and I'll lay it straight down inside the cover on the counter here. So every one that I take out, and I'll take out a lot of them at once just because I can, they're all stuck together with the oil. We'll pull them out and we're just gonna set this directly down in the cover. And this is okay, this is just one of the centering pins for the clutch basket. Now that our clutch plates are out of the way, we're gonna pull these out of the way as well. And there's no difference, you can't do this wrong. There's just six of them and they'll go back in and we're done. We now have to get our clutch centering nut loosened up. And you can see the tabbed washer has been bent over in two spots to protect that nut from spinning. So I like to use a little punch and a hammer to work our, work our way in between the two there. Now is also a good time to pull your clutch push rod out and it can only go in one way. You'll see that on this end, this fits nicely over it, or if you put it in backwards, it wouldn't work. So the bigger end is gonna go towards the sleeve so on the other side of the bike. So we'll take this out now as well. And now with our tabbed washer, and again, we've got a new one of these in the box, so we're not trying to save that. But now we're gonna spin this nut off of here. And what we'll do is we'll use our tool This is a nice beta clutch holding tool. That way I don't hurt the clutch. It just centers on here and now I can zing this nut off. If you guys want this tool added to your order, if you guys do this, just let me know. So now that our nut is off, we will clean this up and we'll save it and we'll re-loctite it when we put it back on. We're gonna keep this even though we're gonna put a new one in. I like this to keep pieces as they come out. And now we can pull our tool back out of there. And we can pull this whole clutch out as an assembly. We don't need to separate it for any reason. And on the back side, I could feel it came apart, so I'll show you guys. Make sure that this little bushing, oops. Make sure that this bushing stays in the back of the clutch basket. That's what rides against that bearing. So we're gonna just keep it as an assembly. And again, I just like lay everything right down in the order it came out. All right, that's everything for disassembly. We got the clutch out of the way. So now we can go ahead and start installing the kickstart kit. So this is the inner ramp. We're gonna use these two eight millimeter bolts. They're torqued to 10 Newton meters. And please follow your directions as far as torque settings. But for this kit in specific, it's gonna be 10 Newton meters. So both of these are just gonna go right in this spot. And please make sure this ramp is in the right direction. I've seen online these may be being put in a different way. So it has to go in very specifically. Now that our ramp is in and torqued, we have our pre-assembled kickstart gear. We're gonna pull this out. It's got the shaft in there as well. Everything's exactly how they want it. So this little ramp has to fit under the ramp that we just installed. So we're gonna put it in and turn it on the back side. And we're not gonna worry about this spring yet. We're gonna install this in the cover here in a second, but make sure it doesn't fall out of its channel in the shaft. You can see down in the shaft there, it's still in. That's how we want that. All right, now that we have our kickstart shaft in and the spring is sprung and clocked into its position here, we can now put the next gear on. And this bike already comes with the one snap ring in the back. So what we have in the kit is gonna be one snap ring, two washers, and the gear. So the first thing we're gonna do is put a little bit of oil on the washer. 
and we'll put that in the back and on this gear it's important that it's facing out it's offset if you put this in this way it's going to grind against the case and not work at all so we're going to put a little bit of oil on the gear itself and we're going to slide that on and it's got to mesh with this the gear above we're going to go ahead with the outer washer and then there's enough room there for that snap ring to go on the outside So we'll take this and we'll put it right on its spot there. And you always want to hear for that click. You want to make sure it goes in its groove. So now that that's in, we can go ahead and start putting our clutch back together. Like I had mentioned before, you want to make sure that this is in the back. It came out with it. So we'll put this back together. And we'll slide it in here and anyway, I guess we could pull this out just to show you guys and there's a washer on the back side of this one so we slide that in get everybody lined up sometimes you have to rotate these gears to get everything to line up the way it needs to put our big thick washer back in smaller inner and this is where our new tabbed washer is going to be used and you can see on the inner clutch basket, it's got one spot that's got a, a flat spot on it. And that's where that's going to sit on there perfectly and just ride just like that. We can now reinstall our nut. And they want Loctite on this. So we'll put some on there. We want to make sure we torque this to 120 Newton meters. Now that it's torqued, we can rebend our clutch tabbed washer over. Pull our tool out first so we can rotate this. So now I'll rotate this so I can get to that tab there. Now that our tabbed washer has been over, it's a good idea to put our push rod back in at this time. And the first thing we'll do is we'll reinstall our six inner pressure plate holders. And now I got our clutch pack in the exact order that it came off because I just laid it directly face down. We'll reinstall these. With all of our clutch plates back in, we can now put the outer plate back on as well. We have to make sure when we put this back together, our springed plate goes face in. You can see how it's concaved like that. You want to hold it. We'll put that one in first and put our springed plate on. And like I had mentioned, this was in the third position before and we want to keep it that way. So we got to line up. There's only six bolt holes and we got to line up these. So right here, it lines up nicely with where it's going to screw into it. Now that our clutch is reinstalled, we can turn our attention to the cover. We got a circ clip on here that's holding the plug in. Our shaft needs to come through where this plug sits. So we're gonna take the circ clip off and we can push this plug out and we can install this seal on the outside of the cover. Put a little bit of oil on this seal before we put it in. So 
So now that our seal's in, we can reinstall this cover on the bike. And what's tricky is you gotta make sure that this water pump gear lines up with the end of the crankshaft here. So I'll show you. On the bike here, this little gear has to line up with this. So when you're putting this cover on sometimes, sometimes you have to rock this gear just a little bit to get it to line up on the inside. So keep in mind we got our dowel pins that are going to line up on the sides of the case. Then we have to watch out for that gear. And then now we have the new shaft that's going to push through where we just put the seal in the case. So we got to watch for a couple different things. As long as we take our time and do it carefully, it should go together just fine. And I'm going to reach in there with a pick tool just to spin that gear just a little bit. See if we can't get it to mate together. So now our cover is on. There's no bolt in it yet. So we're going to use our bolts. We're going to tighten these down. But before I do that, I like to slide this gasket in behind here, and I'll show you. This little gasket is nice time to put this in behind. That way there's room for it to get put in before it gets snug down. If you snug this lower case, uh, the cover down to the case half, it usually get, makes it a little bit tougher for this gasket to slide in there. So now that that's in the back of it, we can go ahead and tighten these eight, eight or nine bolts down. With our inner cover bolts all tight, we can now put our power valve assembly back together. We're going to start by just sliding the rod onto the, onto the knuckle there. And that clip that we took out that we had to keep track of, we're going to reinstall this. So this is going to slide up in this side. And then it's going to push around and lock in on the shaft. And then now we just have our three bolts to put back on here. So we'll re reinsert the cover and we'll get these three bolts put back on. With our cover reinstalled, we can now put our coolant plate back on. The last step to the kit is installing the kicker itself. So we'll slide it on the shaft here, line it up nicely. And this is already pre-loctited, so we can just screw it right on. I've done enough bikes to know that this is where you want this kick start lever to be. Sometimes it's better to put your exhaust back on so you know where that's going to line up so it doesn't ding on it. Okay, this is pretty much everything for a kick start kit. We can now pull the bike over. Works like it should. We got everything tightened back up. And at this point, I'm going to refill the bike with the customer's new coolant. He wanted the engine ice in it. We'll reinstall our skid plate. We'll fill the bike with oil again and we'll get our exhaust reinstalled. And lastly, we'll get our rear brake pedal reinstalled on the side here. So those are all extras that aren't really pertaining to the kit, so I won't show them in the video. And if you guys do this, this is what you should end up with at the end of the day. You should have the plug that came out of the side cover. We did not use the new gasket because this bike is literally brand new and it came apart like we wanted it to. And we have our old uh, crush washer that helps hold the clutch nut on in the center. So that's what I have left over in the kit. Again, this was Jared at 3C's Recreation. If you guys are looking for beta parts, give us a call. Thanks for watching.